Hush Money would be a really good band name. Like, Hush Money, they're opening for Arcade Fire next month. We should go. Here's a thought experiment for you. What if the Mueller investigation wasn't the biggest threat to Donald Trump's presidency? What if it was the ongoing probe into hush money paid to two women alleging affairs with Trump that was the real threat? Weird, right? After all, everyone in the political world, media, politicians, the president, has spent the better part of the last two years talking about, thinking about, and speculating on what might be in the Mueller report. We've spent a whole lot less time and mind space on that other investigation being conducted out of the Southern District of New York. Not familiar with it? You're not alone. Here's a very brief tutorial. In the fall of 2016, right in the final stretch of that presidential campaign, Michael Cohen, Donald Trump's lawyer and fixer, used a shell company he set up in Delaware to make a $130,000 payment to a woman named Stephanie Clifford. Sidebar. Clifford, who is a porn actress and director, is better known by her stage name, Stormy Daniel. Now, the money Cohen paid was to buy Daniel silence. See, she was threatening to go public with allegations that in the mid-2000s, she and Donald Trump had an affair. And she had some pretty uh, intimate details about the presidential candidate. This payoff by Cohen was one of two that he helped facilitate in that critical time period. He was also involved in the National Enquirer's parent company, a company known as American Media Inc., buying the story of former Playboy model Karen McDougal. Now, McDougal, like Daniel, said she had engaged in an extramarital affair with Trump in the mid 2000s. The National Enquirer never had any plans to run the story that they were buying from McDougal. In a move known as catch and kill in the tabloid world, the Enquirer was buying the story and shelving it, effectively protecting Trump in the final weeks of the 2016 campaign. Important sidebar here. Donald Trump and David Pecker, that is his real name, who is the chairman of AMI, American Media Inc., are longtime friends. Sidebar end. Okay, are you with me so far? Okay, this is where things really start to get interesting. For a long time, Cohen denied that Trump knew anything about these payments or that any of the money came from either Trump or his company. Trump backed up that claim in a back and forth with reporters on Air Force One in April 2018. Check out this exchange. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Tony Daniels? Then things started to crumble. It started, stop me if you've heard this one before, with Rudy Giuliani, Trump's lead lawyer. In an interview with, of all people, Sean Hannity, Giuliani said of the $130,000 Cohen shipped to Daniels, quote, the president repaid it. He's talking about the $130,000 payment, right. the settlement payment. That was money that was paid by, um, by his lawyer, the way I would do out of his law firm funds or whatever funds, doesn't matter. The president reimbursed that over a period of several but months. What? But Trump said... Then came Cohen's plea deal in August 2018, in which he pleaded guilty to eight felony counts, including two related to the attempted breaking of campaign finance rules. In announcing his plea deal, Cohen said he made the Daniels and McDougal payments, quote, in coordination and at the direction of a candidate for federal office. <laughs> Who could that ever be? So. Cohen said effectively, and the Southern District of New York separately confirmed, that not only had Trump known about the payments and provided the money for the payments, but he had also directed and coordinated the whole thing. Why is this bad, you ask? Fair question. Aside from the whole president apparently lying to the press corps about hush money paid to two women alleging affairs with him thing, well, to understand that, you need a quick campaign finance primer. I promise it'll be quick. You can only accept a donation of roughly $2,800 from any individual for your campaign. If you donate your own money to help your campaign, you have to disclose that fact. The hush money payments could be considered campaign donations due to their nature to prohibit damaging information from coming out about the president and their timing. In the case of Clifford slash Daniels, her payment went through 11 days before the 2016 election. What Trump, with Cohen's help, is accused of doing is making an undisclosed contribution to his campaign with the express purpose of end-running the laws that govern just those 
sorts of contributions. If you believe Cohen and the Southern District of New York, Trump is effectively an unindicted co-conspirator in this scheme to keep Daniels and McDougal quiet in hopes of improving his chances of winning the White House. If Trump, this will shock you, doesn't see things that way. Here's what he had to tweet in March 2019 on this whole thing. Quote, it was not a campaign contribution and there were no violations of the campaign finance laws by me. Fake news. The nub of the issue is whether Trump paid off Daniels and McDougal under the belief that those stories coming out would hurt his chances of winning the White House. If he did, well, that looks a whole heck of a lot like a campaign contribution that should have been disclosed. SDNY investigation is ongoing and as of mid-April was closer to Trump's inner circle than we previously knew. For example, as the Wall Street Journal reported, SDNY has already interviewed Hope Hicks the one-time White House communications director and longtime Trump confidant to find out what she knows about the hush money payment. Trump may be right that there was no collusion and no obstruction, but what if there was direction and coordination? Hmm? And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Catch them all.